Hello guys, my name is Tasim and welcome. I'm going to show you how to access external database on an Android app using PHP scripts and JSON. I've already done an old tutorial, but this time I'm going to do all the network calls on a background thread using async task. Now if you don't know what async task is, you need to go here and read about it. But if you follow my code, you should be okay with that. What I need, or what I, what we require for this tutorial for this talk, okay? We already should have an external database. I have a MySQL database on my local machine. And this is what it looks. I have a test database on it, and it has a customer table. It has all these entries. And then I should have a PHP script on a web server. And this script should connect to the the database query and get query it and get data from it and that data will be encoded into JSON using PHP and then we print that. We should also have a blank Android app. I'll show you what my PHP scripts look like. It connects to the database. It queries the, the this test database. It queries all the entries from the customer calls, fetches them and encodes them into the JSON format and then prints it. And this is when you go to the URL where this PHP script is stored, this is what is what is printed. Okay, and this is a JSON array and it is a list of all the customer in my customer table. So let's go. So this is what we are trying to achieve. Okay. And how are we gonna achieve is we need to have a URL for this PHP script, okay? We'll get the HTTP response object from that URL when we execute the get method. And then we'll get the NTTP from that HTTP response object and we'll convert that HTTP entity, which is a string, into the JSON array. And then we'll iterate to this JSON array and get all uh, the customers and we'll print that in a text view. So my blank, PH blank Android app is just like that. I'm using Android Studio by the way. So my main activity, this is my layout file. It has it has only one text view and I named it response text view and then main activity class and initializing it and connecting the okay. Because I'm gonna do more tutorials on it so all the code which uh, calls do the network calls I'm gonna put in a separate class. I'll call that class as API connector. Okay. And I'll make a method here. I'm going to post a lot of code today uh, only because I want to save some time and not want this tutorial to be 40 or 20 minutes long. Uh, you should pause and copy the code uh, if you're using my code. Okay. So the first we need a URL. Okay. So my URL is here. Okay, I'll create a method first which will return JSON array. And I'll call this get all customers. Okay, doesn't take any parameter. So this is my URL. And then I'll get HTTP response object from that URL and then entity from that response object. Okay, I'm also going to tell you what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm initializing HTTP entity here because I need to use it outside try catch block. So, and for, I'm initializing a default HTTP client and initializing HTTP get method and I'm passing the URL into it and I'm then getting the HTTP response object from this by executing this URL. Okay. Now this method uh, it generates it throws the exceptions. It's that's why I'm putting that in the try catch block. It can gives you all kind of exceptions. The reason I'm catching this specifically is because it signals the error in the HTTP protocol. So if there's a error in this here in order to I mean, instead of going through all these print stack traces to find out what the error is, if it catches the client protocol error, 
you need to you can log it here okay once that is done you will convert that into a JSON array okay and then return it and okay so what I'm doing here is I'm initializing JSON array here I'm checking if if it's not null because if it's not null if it's null then it's no point of doing all this code okay I'm initializing string response here which is this string and then I'm getting that from this entity utility okay and I'm logging this so I'll see like this is exactly pushing and this method here when you get the JSON array from a st from string it throws exceptions so we need to catch it here as well you can also save some space in the code by doing this in here okay but I choose it this way so once all this is done and I, we have got JSON I mean when this code will be executed we should get JSON array and we'll then return it to wherever we are calling this method okay which will be probably in a async task so this here is done now we'll create a, a class which will execute the our async task okay I'll call that okay I'll call that as get all customer task and it extends async okay it takes parameter it takes the progress long uh, it takes all sort of a parameters okay for parameters I'll uh, pass API connector class to it and progress is long and result in our case is JSON array and the method I'm going to use it okay and the other method is this so if you have read the documentation you know what these methods do for the people who are lazy okay do do in background as a method which is execute executed on background thread okay. I really need to write it and this here is executed on a main thread so in background we need we want it to do is we want to create params and we want it to do this okay now this method returns JSON array, and that's what we want. We'll return it. Okay, just give me a pause, two more seconds. I have a tradable code. Okay, now once this method will be executed and we will get the JSON array, it will execute this. I mean, this task will execute this thing. And here, what we, will, we need to do is we'll set text to text view okay and we will pass this JSON array to it now this is a method we need to create okay mm. text JSON array okay okay now in this text view okay we are, we are getting JSON array from the PHP scripts what we all doing here is, is is we are iterating through a JSON array getting the objects JSON object from it and then making up and making a I'm making actually a string which I will just set it to I will set I will post or display I mean whatever the word is and this is what I'm doing here Okay, I'm initializing a string. I'm iterating to JSON array, and the reason I'm doing it inside try clad is because this method here throws the exception. Okay, so I'm getting a name from this key value, 
which if you can see name these are my keys in a JSON object <coughs> so once we get all of this I'm posting it here okay so in order this class to run <coughs> we are calling it here so once uh, the activity starts we want it to start executing the that call so new get all customer tasks execute and we're passing a parameter which is API connector class so creating a new this is all we need to do in order to and there's one more thing which is very important in your manifest file you should say please give it to the internet If you have all followed correctly, we will be able to get the result. Okay. It takes a long time to execute. Okay, for my other tutorials, which I'm going to follow, is uh, I'm going to in my next tutorial instead of this text view, I'm going to put that all the JSON object in a list in a list view and then followed by calls to the PHP script for only one object or the conditions which we need to do in the future so it's running here so see it executes it and then once it got all the, the items it, it does that in the background and once you all, it got all it posted it here so thanks very much. Uh, before we go, I got a lot of uh, comments, uh, people saying that we get this error here and they're not able to know. So I'll post to the comments to all the people who have, uh, I mean, who has got this error. Now this error is specifically telling you that it's able to, it's not able to convert the JSON string, this string, into JSON array. Now the only reason it is, which I'm saying is, when you're writing your PHP script here, so if you're getting only one object and you're doing the same way I'm doing, it should give you a JSON array of one object uh, if you have only one entry in your customer table. Now I'm going to show you what this error means. It means that if the response string is this way it's going to throw you this ex exception error okay but if it's a json array with two objects it will be fine even if it's a json array with one object i mean notice these brackets here it will be fine now if your response is only this this okay so it's not a json array it's a json object here so in order in here which i'm going to do in a future tutorials uh, in API class when I'm converting the response string into JSON array so if your response string is like that say here instead of JSON array JSON object okay of course you need to do here JSON object and that should work fine but I don't rec I, if you follow my tutorial you don't need to do it Okay, it will always return JSON array from the scripts. Uh, if you have any other uh, questions, please post comments. And if you like these tutorials and want to get notified for other future tutorials, please subscribe. Thanks very much. I hope it solves. Sorry. Thanks. Bye.